Easy now. Easy now. I don't say such things. <laughs> Hello, and, Hello so and welcome. Hello and welcome to this episode. <laughs> oh no. What's it called? Pod <laughs> drive. Did you not even do your Googling before you got here? No. Seriously. Should I have done? Well, now I guess we need to introduce this guy next to us. Do we actually, do we know him? Should we introduce the Drive Talk podcast, Powered by Mitchell, in fact? We, we should introduce the Drive Talk podcast, <laughs> yes. Um, so it begins. So it begins. Welcome back, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for your support, as always. Uh, it's been awesome watching the numbers grow, etc. cetera. Uh, we're back down here at the Podium Paddock at Podium Place. Um, obviously, my co-host, Petrol Ped, and our absolute legend of a guest down there, couldn't, uh, couldn't make it today, but we got him instead. Yeah, we got yeah, that's, <laughs> I only actually live about 35 minutes away, so I was a, a good stand-in for... Uh, I mean, you had Fernando Alonso, but... Yeah, he, uh, he couldn't make it. He was too busy climbing on podiums. He was, yeah. Um, but this is Chris Eads, a uh, good mutual friend of ours, also known as Baron Von Grumble, also known as the co-host uh, or the, 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 the star on 44 Teeth along with Al, um, which is a really awesome motorbike youtube channel uh and i'm not just saying that it's it's really good very comical and uh it's a pleasure having you on mate thank you very much that was a very nice introduction and uh, very kind yes <laughs> gotta play this carefully you know gently I know. So, so we brought chris along today to kind of teach us how to be a little bit more risque in a podcast eh? i don't yes. know what you're worried about I'm an incredibly polite young man, and I rarely say anything controversial. Well, talking about young, how, how you know how young are you? I am 44 years old, which is quite Ooh. good. I mean, that's that's why we called it 44. So 43, 44, 40, 51. Uh, 51. You've just ruined the flow there. Yeah, but your mum still thinks I'm younger than you. Oh, that, this is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Oh no, that's got me. Again. Do you know his mum well? <laughs> oh, let's just move on. <laughs> hey, mum, how's it going? Sorry for anything that Chris says. Hi, uh, Joe's mum. How are you doing? You're right. Yes. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so we've gone in to this episode with no kind of format, script, structure, or anything. Just thinking, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. And it's over to Joe to kind of lead us through it. Oh, thanks. See, I didn't even know that bit. But um, well, let's uh, let's rewind to I think it was 2016, uh, where many of us met. It's the first time I met Chris. We went to a go karting event um, at da Daytona and Sandown Park, and actually that was one of the first times I met Patrick and a number of other people. Um, and it was a really good evening. Uh, I, Archie, I, I had my rib broken on that. You had so. your rib broken. There was a few incidents. Um, Archie Hamilton turned up as the pro racing driver. Obviously, he was drafted in to show us all how it's done and win. Um, I ended up winning that race. And then, uh, but it was really... <laughs> he got that one in. Just, he just did so that that when we start bit. talking about Palmer Sport, you can jump in there. Yeah, yeah. apparently being really heavy in go-karts is a good thing. Um, traction, they say, don't they? Traction, yes. In fact, while we're talking about that, it's the first time we're all... Oh, well, what are we? Six, four, six... Three. Six, four. Six, four. Wow. Three, three giants on the strapping sofa. Strapping young men. Yes, three strapping young men. Um, but that was the first time I met Chris, and um, I must say it was kind of love at first sight. But... Yeah, I remember you sort of... Uh, I, I, you, we were both quite early, and you were sort of checking out the track condition, ever the professional... Uh, and uh, I was like, oh, hello. Yep. Hello, what do you do then? Oh, I do this. And uh, yeah, we got chatting and um, fell in love. We did. And I have to say, fast forwarding to today, the here and now, me with my bike license that I got last summer, um, majority of that was down to your influence and sort of being around your world, seeing your bikes coming, you know, popping down to see you lots. Uh, as we're going to find out in this podcast, Chris is also a car guy. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and honestly, I'm so glad that I have my bike license now and that I'm riding. And, and I hope to do some interesting stuff with you in the near future. Yeah, well, we, we've, we've talked about some cool content ideas, which I think are going to be not only good for you, but also really entertaining to watch and informative. So Yes, and that's the most important thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, so Chris, can you tell us something about yourself, uh, who you are, what you do, because I know that you do juggle a few things. You still have a job, as it were, but you manage to fit in a lot of things around that. Um, 
So yeah, over to you. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit. Yeah, I'm I'm probably one of the worst self promoters going. It is hard to self promote. I find it difficult. So it's always that sort of slightly cringy. Oh, I do this and do that. I mean, some people, YouTubers, let's not name any names, but they f up it, don't they? <laughs> and like, oh, I've done this. I'm amazing. I'm brilliant. Whereas uh, beat number one. Where's that swear box, Pat? <laughs> but you're not allowed to swear. Well, it's all right. Just, we'll no, you can, you, just, just yeah. be yourself. Just be yourself. Be yourself. We, can, okay. we can beep. Come, come to our house, be oh, But I don't yeah. want to. Mi, mi casa is su casa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's, it's a, a self-promotion thing I find quite difficult. But, yeah, I, I only really... Let's rewind. So, I ran a production company in London, and I used to ride a motorcycle in and out from Surrey into London uh, because public transport's pretty crap and um I, I i don't like being i don't like being on public transport nothing to do with the people um but uh, <laughs> right. i i just I, the, the whole control thing i don't like it i just want to be under my own steam i prefer to like i'd even ride my bike in the snow because i prefer just to go eight miles an hour and get there on my own than rely on a train not working because there's leaves on the track uh so yeah i used to ride in and out and a guy who worked with me Ollie 333, if any if anyone's remembers back in those days, because this is probably 12 years ago now, probably something like that. Um, he did this thing called vlogging, motor vlogging. And it was like, what's that? And he was like, oh, you should try it, you should try it. And I was like, that is for absolute nerds. There's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna ride along and talk. Like that is that is stupid. You look like a, you sound like a And uh, he was like, no, try it, try it. And I was like, oh. Okay, and then I, I kept sort of getting a bit in trouble with the law. Like, if you're on a motorbike a lot, and it's I used to ride a Jix 1000 in, in and out of town, you tend to sort of attract a bit of attention. You get pulled over quite a lot. So as a way of almost self-policing, I put a camera on my head, and also to serve the boredom, I, I talked. So the, so you vlogged, basically? I vlogged, yeah. You became that nerd. Yeah. I, I became that nerd, and... Um, but I always did it with this, some, some would say, sort of arrogance thing, which, which does sort of follow me around. I, I try not to come across as an arrogant asshole, but... Uh, it, it hasn't it, worked. It, it doesn't work, does it? I no. don't know it's whether it's the voice or whatever. But anyway, um, I think it's more of a sort of... Uh, we'll get onto this later, but more of a sort of self-defense mechanism about being actually an introvert, weirdly. But anyway... Um, I digress. By the way, I've got ADD, so by the, <laughs> which everyone has these days. It's the most popular disease in the world. Yep. Uh, so if I skip around, just nudge me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I used to do that and then put some videos up on Tinterweb and um, it started to gain quite a lot of traction. And back then, you know, I remember getting my first thousand views, as I'm sure you all do on your first YouTube channels. And it's like, oh, my God, this is this is this is mad. Um, but it was a real explosion at that time of the whole vlogging. Even very few people did it with like cameras. It was like, like as in just walking around doing their experience. Influencers, that, that term didn't exist then. And anyway, this whole thing exploded and it sort of spawned a generation of motorcycle vloggers and car people as well. I remember um, seeing through Glass, he used to be a subscriber of mine and... Um, he got into it through that type of stuff, uh, through the bike world. So it, it did. I'm not saying I'm responsible for that, but it was, it was such a, it was such a different place then than it is now. Um, and we, we can talk about that as we go. If you want to jump in, by the way. No, no. Because yeah. back then there's like a handful of people. Now there's like thousands of people trying to do it. Yeah, you couldn't. I, I there's no way that I think I could start doing what I did for a number of reasons now, and it be at the level as it is it just wouldn't work um i think that mainly the competition i guess there's there's more people mm. doing it youtube itself has changed mm, so massively and it wasn't so much algorithm driven back then it was if you make good content people like it it won't there's no throttling of videos there's, it is just it, 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 it was a free how it should be how it should yeah. be. I, I, Basically. Would, I would absolutely argue how it should be, yes. Um, but the world has changed and we've all got to do what we do. Uh, so anyway, so I did that and uh, yeah, and this, the channel slowly grew. Uh, so that was the Baron Von Grumble channel. And then- where, where did the name come from, by the way? Honestly, it was literally, I'd made my first little video thing. Hadn't even uploaded it yet. And 
I was with Ollie in the office, like late at night, like tapping away. And uh, I was like, oh, he was like, what are you going to call it? I was like, I don't know, I moan a lot. So I don't know, like grumbling, moaning. I was like, well, I don't know. Literally typed Baron von Grumble, done. Didn't even, which is so weird because normally I will procrastinate about a decision like that for years and uh, just did it. Click send and go. And it was, it's probably a good life lesson um, to not procrastinate, just get on with it. Mm. Um, so it was, yeah, that's, it just, spawned and becomes a it becomes a brand it does become a brand yeah well, you can just use your own name that everyone thinks you've made up like joe yeah. yes yeah yeah which, which is ironic isn't it <laughs> i mean names it is one of those like names is a difficult subject isn't it i mean i know, like i i something sort of if people call me baron which they will because that's how they know me it does. It just feels awkward, doesn't it? Is there something a bit sort well, of? Well, yes, a title for a start. Yeah, there, that's true. <laughs> but there is a, a strange, yeah. There is something slightly uncomfortable about it. But then it's also slightly uncomfortable if people come up and call me Chris, who I've never met before. Yeah. 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 And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that or anyone shouldn't do that, but it's just like because uh, uh, if they say Chris, then I'm like, have I actually met you? And do I not remember you? Or do you not and, and sometimes they won't even say that it's like who probably the same with you with things like that it's yeah like yeah Ed I mean, I, or peter or my my the weirdest one is when people come up because i'm terrible with names and faces and remembering yeah. people and and they're talking to you like they know you and you think do have i yeah. met you before do i know you are you it's normally are you an important person from like a car brand that i should remember and yeah don't? <laughs> yeah are you just a uh, an acquaintance i've met or have i never met you before because you know everything about me because i put it all online yeah but I've never met you before. But you're one of my followers, and I want to meet you. And I'd quite, I always ask them what their handle is, so that I can see if I remember them from the comments section. Because yeah. all you see is a name; you don't have a face to look no. at. No, it's uh, funny that, isn't it? Because you, you do see, you do get a like it, 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 uh, the the old phrase: "Never judge a book by its cover," or whatever. But you can't help it if you see someone's name and then a thumbnail of whatever it is. Mm. You've got an instant perception of what that person is and does. And I think going back to the name thing, that's why the name is actually really important. Like moving on to when we started 44 Teeth, which was the um, uh, evolution of what I did, where Al, who's my business partner in that company, he worked for a magazine called Fast Bikes, and that got bought out and it was going to move. And Al had done a couple of phone interviews with me just through being in the bike industry. And then we went on a bike trip together and we were chatting. We got on really well and we were sort of like, well, should we do something together? Because uh, he didn't want to particularly follow that publishing route and the, let's face it the magazine industry is uh not in a healthy state so that's how we started it and then but the whole name of 44 teeth is, is the rear sprocket size on a motorcycle but it's quite nuanced like not a lot of people know that and it's particularly if you're ringing up some like a reception person going oh hello can i speak to dave or oh, who's calling oh it's chris from 44 teeth it's like what you would like some sort of dental thing <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so, so going back to that name thing, it is really important. I think, honestly, that we, we haven't had as much growth because of that name. Um, because the, pe the, the, the quick perception of it, you build that thing like, what is this? I don't know. If it was Motorbike 44, then people would at least go, oh, it's a motorbike thing. Mm. So, so the name is really important, but it's almost, you, it's so difficult to predict what's going to hit and what isn't. Um, but in the same way, you know, do you want to be Britney Spears or the Velvet Underground? You know, you, you've got a cult following that are really devoted or people that, oh, you, loads of people like your stuff, but they don't really care that much. Yeah. So, and you can't really, once it's there, you can't really change it. So here, here, here am I, no. petrol ped, and I review electric cars and the amount of comments you get, mm, <laughs> you, you've got petrol in your name and you uh, yeah, but I can't change it now. It's too late. It's too late. And let's not talk about the second part of petrol ped, because that's. No, yeah. pe pedestrian. Pedestrian, yes. exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not what he said earlier on off camera, but anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, so so names are pretty important. Anyway, that was my route, so, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, 44 Teeth has been going for, I think it's like eight, eight and a half years now. Is wow. it that long? It is that long. Wow. And um, But then I, it, all throughout that, I've I've managed, still my production company, it's got a lot smaller. I decided to move out of London because it just wasn't really doing it for me. And then the videos of me commuting and moaning in London, which is what a lot of people liked, stopped. And anyone, you put any video up in a big city on a motorbike, it doesn't matter what the content is, 
it it does get a lot of views for some reason. If you're driving around a country lane, forget it. Yeah, because in London you get people walking out, you get opportunity to comment on a lot more environmental stimulus stimuli that's happening around you, whereas oh, there's a dead badger. <laughs> but you've also got another hidden talent. Um and no, it's not the driving. We will talk about that a bit later. Uh but it's your voiceover. I mean you're yeah. I think you're a lost you know, lost opportunity there. So could you give us a little uh, voiceover of 44 Teeth, maybe introduce me and Ped. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting you on the spot now. The, the, voice is, the voice is definitely, and that's another thing when doing, doing that whole vlogging thing, you do have to have, well, you don't have to, but if you don't have a engaging, calming, exciting, whatever your character is voice, then you're up against it. Uh, if you've just got an average or a slightly annoying voice, which we've all seen channels with people that do have that, it's just it's just hard to watch, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> and you, can, you know, uh, so so but, but that is that is part of it, and you've got to play to your strengths. Um, but yeah, the voiceover thing, I am actually in. I might not still be in there, but there is a voiceover of me in the science museum. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you have actually done it for only because it was a again. A, a client that we used to work with and they're yeah. like oh shit we need a voiceover i was like uh i'll do it yeah so yeah if you if you do go in and put a certain headphone in you'll hear me hear me hear me saying i can't remember the exact word but i think it was something like the planet mars rotates around the sun four times the speed of the earth <laughs> Who knew? I, don't oh. know, I don't know if those stats are correct that's, that's the a... title for the podcast that's we it. have the voice from the science museum yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and I've done a few other little bits, as, as, but I, 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 I actually genuinely enjoy that. And, it, and you think, oh God, yeah, you could get loads of money for that. The reality is, it's the same with vlogging. The, the competition out there for millions of people sitting in their own little garden shed studios that are going to do something for fifty quid. Just forget it. If you're not Brian Blessed, you're not good. Yeah, you've got to, again. You've got to have that uh, provenance before you begin. Yeah. So, yeah. Brilliant. I mean, yeah, talking about the 44 Teeth um, channel, I think what you guys do so well, which is very difficult these days, is you're very uh, open about stuff. You're very honest about everything, um, which isn't a thing. And I think it, it's a subject that we kind of touched upon with the podcast. It's, it's something that's very difficult in this day and age um, with brands and manufacturers and sponsors and stuff. There's a fine line with a lot of stuff and you have got to tread reasonably gently with a lot of things because you can burn bridges and there are so many other YouTubers and people out there. Um, but I think you guys do such a good job of being, uh, well, getting points and facts and interesting information across, but in quite a funny, exciting way. Um, an edgy way an edgy way yes and like your news i love your news uh sections yeah. because you two just you almost take the piss out of it but at the same time once again there's really interesting information in there and you want to listen to it and absorb it so um it is nice and refreshing to see that sort of content on youtube because uh yeah as we all know it's becoming more and more polished and um mm. yeah there's a lot more red tape around so well it's not it's not youtube it's not YouTube now is, as the, the the content's evolved, under YouTube's direction, it's not what it was, which was, hey, what was the, its its slogan at the beginning? Um, uh, it was something about everything, like, what was it, what was YouTube's caption? It was like, you, you all, anyway, it was, it was a personal thing, I can't remember exactly what it was, but the whole point of it was that anyone can go and put anything up, and it's a level playing field. You don't have to have a massive saturday night live tv show to get views whereas there was a, a crossover of now you've got like these massive like u.s shows like jimmy kimmel and all this stuff and massive people who are already famous sucking up the time that most people that, that, that sucking up the time that that normal people have got to watch content like people have only got a certain amount of time a day right? yeah so if you've got these massive people coming in and, and extracting all that time, there's less time for you. And it's mm. kind of a little bit unfair, but of course it's like everything these days, it comes down to money and advertising. And you know, I think the, a big turning point again was the whole PewDiePie thing when he made that joke and then got canceled 
from advertising and then, then that whole advertising thing, is it offensive? Is it this? Is it that? Mm. And then everyone lost their and now it's all like, duh, 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 duh. so it's just, yeah, it's, it's a really tough industry, but going back to the 44 teeth stuff and communication, we try really hard to, to be like your mates just, and, and talk exactly how we talk amongst ourselves. Like it is us, like genuinely it is us. That is how we talk. In fact, we talk worse, a lot worse, <laughs> but we really? definitely can't, definitely can't show that on the channel. But yeah, so, so we try to come across as ourselves and only do the things that we want to do um, and yeah try not to fillet the industry too much because as soon as you start doing that people start losing confidence but you know that that again is another way that we are we should in my opinion have five times as many subscribers as we do um, but I think that's because we don't play the game hard enough on YouTube we don't do we you, you have to make it a bit clickbaity these days or you're just going to you know, suffer. But we, we really try. It's such a balancing act of wanting to get the wide audience but satisfy the existing audience. And, it's, mm. and I'm sure you play the same game. Like, oh, yep. what should I call it? Should I put it in capital letters? Should I put an exclamation <laughs> mark on it? Should I put a, a, a thumbnail that's, that's enticing? Like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> and then it's just, but, but the thing is, it works though, doesn't it? It, it does, works. Yeah. I mean, every, every title has to have an element of clickbait. Yeah, it, uh, but uh, for me, clickbait is when you click something and it's not actually a representation of what's in the video. Correct, but yeah. most most stuff is that. <clears throat> yeah. Even like, how but, many times have you actually watched a YouTube video that says "Wow" in the title that is actually made you go "Wow"? Never. Most of the time, people click on it and yeah. forget what the bloody thing was even called. Well, but that's just the news in general, isn't it? If you go on your phone, you get yeah. those, you know, the news things that come up. And the headline you'll never like, believe this you'll never believe this so and so and then you click onto it and you're like well wait a second there's nothing relating to that exclusive, no. exclusive or, it's yeah. breaking. or it's literally it's just like a paragraph of, yeah. of, a, of opinion yes and you're like what the hell yeah but that's that's how and again that's what's driven youtube to, to and all online platforms to have this algorithmic the, the only reason they are there is to make money and if your content doesn't make them money they're not interested in you. And that's as simple as that. So if advertisers can't advertise against our stuff because we said something wrong or whatever it is, they're not going to promote it. So it's like every video is exactly the same curve, everything yeah. through, our, through our analytics, exactly the same curve and then stops and then that's it. That's when YouTube went, oh, they've had enough. Yeah. And just turn the volume down. Yeah. Whereas back when I started, that would just keep going up. Yeah, and the, a bit of fluctuating. It, and it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't do this first 24 hours nothing which is what happens on all of our stuff yeah. it would just keep going if it was a good video it would keep going yeah yeah, yeah. and that's that's a channel of all size you know and, and that so when you've got yeah up and coming creators to be honest they've not got open help no for most of them no unless they play the game and they you got to be like you know cleaner than clean you, you have to approach the whole thing which is the biggest crime of all of this you have to approach the whole thing of what's going to make youtube the most money not what do i want to do as a creator what do, what contact do i want to make mm. uh, so if anyone is out there that wants to do stuff you've got to make that decision do you want to plea fillet the ceos or do you want to just do something fun that you enjoy and i can only recommend if you do the stuff you enjoy because if you don't enjoy it yeah first of all you're going to be bloody miserable you're going to get frustrated just forget about the money i get asked all the time oh can you help me start my channel what am i going to do just do whatever you want and don't make it crap it, exactly this is exactly so we had um tim shmi on as as our first guest sorry mate you're our second um sorry right. but um he oh. he was uh this is exactly a discussion we had with him and Ped and I kind of talked about it and then Tim was like, that's the best point ever. Uh, never, if you're starting YouTube to become famous or rich, forget it. Don't even bother, mm. like especially today. But if you're starting YouTube to share your passion and talk about something you love, then do that. And if you do it well enough and long enough, then it will eventually start. And that's, I think that's something that we can all sort of relate to, right? It's all, yeah. we all I mean, you still have your job. You do bits and pieces with it, which is a great thing to have because the revenue is a whole different subject that we won't get into. But it's really unpredictable. One month you're like, "Oh, this is great! Like, I could, I don't need any other income." And then the next month you're like, "Ah, oh, 
I'm not even going to cover my bills this month. Mm. And I think, um, and it is just, it's just about putting your head down, like with any job really is, is working hard. But, um, but I think especially that if you walk into, if you're starting a YouTube channel, any kind of social media platform, and we all get asked, like Chris just said, how should I do it? What should I do? So many people are so impatient. They just want to go straight to the top. How do I get myself a, an RA? And, ha and to be fair, a lot of these manufacturers are to blame as well um, because they do just hand out their best cars straight away. It's like, hi, I'm nobody. I've just bought 10,000 followers off Instagram. Yeah. I know that you're gonna do, you're gonna have done absolutely no research whatsoever. You're not gonna look at any of my ex posts and see that they've got no comments on them. And each one has got 2000 likes exactly. How did that happen? Um, but here's our best, most expensive car. We're not even gonna ask what your car history is. And it's just, and it's probably the same in the bike world. Um, and it's to just, a degree, yeah. Yeah, it, but it's. I mean, I it's, mean, you've got to fit a criteria, and I mean, I don't want to get too con like controversial here, but if you fit into the criteria of what big brands want to at least have the perception of showing to the public of who they are, then uh, you're going to do well. If you are us, then you're you're going to have a different you're going to have a different take on it, and you're going to have a different journey. But as long as you do what you want to do and you love it and you keep your integrity you've done nothing wrong it doesn't matter if you've got a thousand followers or a million you know, yeah if you've got to make life work however you want to however you can and uh you can't you can you can only look back on that scenario if you've done the right thing and you've loved it as a positive um and try not to get too dragged down by youtube comments which does i've been doing it for God, know, 12 years now but you still get these people and it's not that i'm hurt by them it's that I want to go around there and and convince and talk to them and go, this is why you're wrong. Yeah. But you've just got to go, no, and do exactly what YouTube doesn't tell you. But you can't even block, you can't, no, you you can't, can't block, block people anymore. anymore. You, you can't block people their, on YouTube. I know. You just have to remove their comment and don't let... Uh, How can you not block people on YouTube? I've blocked so many. And then about three months ago, I was like, where's the block button gone? And the block has gone. Oh, it has gone. How could you not block... So if you're getting bullied, you can't block them now. I know. You it's, can just you can just make their comments not show up. Yeah, I don't want them even watching my content. No, like I don't I. want yeah. them there. Because you still see the comments. Yeah, <laughs> Your exactly. audience might not. But it, yeah. Exactly. Um, but I think that's, yeah, the, the whole cyberbullying thing is just, uh, I'm the same. Imagine being a kid. I mean, I've got a 10-year-old kid now, and he's just getting into the that world of social media. It's inevitable. And I've, I'm, I'm petrified for him. Yeah, fortunately, he's quite a, you know, chatty, kind, good, like, he's all right kid. You know, he's not, he's not in the sort of, hopefully, never in the bullied category. But all it takes is one day you shit your pants. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that's it. You're shitty pants Joe forever. <laughs> and, you know, and then, and then you get a YouTube channel called Shitty Pants Joe Achilles. And you go around in every car, would... you shit your pants, and that's your thing. But I bet you that would that would be a success it overnight. Probably would, yeah. Maybe not for me, but uh, for or, the, or, the, the, or the manufacturers yeah. that lend me the car. Today, so, I've got the new M3 Touring. I'm going to shit my pants in it. Yeah, yeah, the, with Silverstone leather. No, we're, we're in. Or we do it in the Panamera that we were having uplifts in, or, or, or chauffeured in, it, um, which uh, had a brown interior. Which had a brown interior. But then actually, it wouldn't be as effective, would it? It would have no, to be Silverstone. But anyway, yeah. anyway, so yeah. so so, we, so you do it that. It took us half an hour. It took us oh, half an oh, hour to, to go down to base. Well, yeah, but we're talking about children shitting their pants. Yes. Yeah. True. yeah. Anyway, no. Anyway, the if the 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 stench from that incident yeah. would follow a child. It used to be when we were at school, yeah. uh, you you might have a hot, tough time at those hours at school. It's gonna yeah. follow you everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. do anything about it. So, what one of my mates were at school, I think from junior school, we used to call him Smeg. Yeah, right. And and like foreskin smag. As a, probably, yeah. I don't know, but as a grown adult, I'm pretty sure he's probably still called smeg. Yeah, my friend, my my best mate's called Bog, because at primary school, he 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 had it, it, like he had some bit of bog roll stuck to his shoe when he came out of the toilet. It was it was like literally and that's that. It stuck. That's it, Bog. Yeah, bog roll. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> sorry, Rob, if you're out there. Yeah, yeah. There's sorry, all these sorry. People listening, going, oh no. Yeah, it's out now. Um, well, I, 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 I think that's all fascinating with your sort of ha how you become who you are today. And in fact, we all share similar interesting stories. It, 
And I think no any, journey's the same, isn't no it? No journey's the same. I think that probably goes for most YouTubers, especially over the age of, let's say, 30, because they probably definitely had some kind of career or job beforehand and, mm. and, it, and it progressed over to, to, to what they do today. Um, but something I talk about a lot on my socials, and I know we all, we all have, and, and Chris, you, you've got your own Instagram account that I think is kind of uh, almost um, there for this, is, is the whole mental health aspect of, of, um, of life these days. And, and I know um, it's just an important thing. And, and, and I know we talked a lot during COVID and stuff, you and I got quite down and stuff, but you've started walking. Do you still do it most mornings? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, I did it this morning. I yeah. was out, out every morning and out of, so should I, should I do a little recap of where yeah, yeah, please, so, yeah. so I, 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 throughout my life really, I've sort of been on the edge of this mental health, I've been susceptible to mental health issues and whether, I don't know what, I don't know why, whatever, it's just, you know, the, the, the cards, the, my genetic makeup, whatever. Um, so I've struggled with it on and off some stages of life better than others but then I, I had like the whole COVID thing and it, 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 it really fried my brain and I couldn't understand what was going on I just didn't I lost a lot of faith in many many institutions governments and let's not get into it here because you, unfortunately you can't um, but it really flicked a bit of a switch in me and it's kind of like well what's the point if if a, if a, if you just spent your life savings and your effort was to, your dream was to start a restaurant let's say and you put all your effort into it and then someone completely outside of your control comes and goes can't do that anymore uh but but i've just put my life don't care but it, it's illegal but but just shut up and you're like what what hang on we're don't we live in a like western democracy here this this is this is but oh well people might die well, okay, but you know, it just seems so extreme. It seems so tyrannical and such a radical thing. And I know there's people on both sides of an argument. I'm never, I'm not going to, you know, say anything controversial. I'm just saying my experience. That that really flicked a switch. And I know me and Joe, we used to talk about that a lot. Like I don't understand. I couldn't travel. I wasn't interested in. I was stopped from travelling basically for three years for my job, two and a half years, because I didn't have enough faith in the institutions that it was the right thing that though I was being forced into doing. I was like, well, no, I'm not interested. Um, and it just opened my eyes to this sort of, wow, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And anyway, so I went down a bit of a hole and a bit, you know, got pretty dark and had a bit of a rough time. And, and out of the end of that, I, I started a, a little, it's not, it's certainly not a charity, but I, I noticed a lot of, and as, I don't want to. This isn't jumping on a bandwagon or anything, but I know a lot of blokes in particular just feel that they can't talk about stuff, and it's embarrassing and blah blah. blah. And to to an ex certain extent, I'm also sick of people moaning about their mental health because they, it, you know, there's a lot of whinging and whining. There's a lot more worse people off in the world, but when you're in your little bubble of uh, pain and darkness, you can't see that. You just yeah. can't change your brain to go fucking hell. I don't. I don't actually have to. Uh, fight my way through the streets to go and get some bottle of water or whatever. You know, there's 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 terrible stuff going on in the world. So my little attempt of uh, of trying to ease that, and it's not even a um, I'm going to cure you. We've got the answer. It was just, hey mate, we all feel like shit, but we all love cars. We all love bikes. Let's go and take our mind off it at least. Mm -hmm. And and I want you to know that if you're having a rough time and you suddenly have a bit of a panic, like if, if I was freaking out now, it's okay. And because that's main, that's a lot of what this anxiety, I used to suffer with anxiety attacks. There's a lot of it was how other people would react to me if I had a, like a, you know, a freak out somewhere. Like, oh my God, no, I don't wanna. And that would then ex ex exaggerate the anxiety because, oh my God, it's happening. What am I gonna do? People are gonna think I'm so weird. So anyway, I came up with this thing called Permission to Talk. You obviously stole the talk name for this podcast. This is on my mind. Of course. I'll see you later. Is it spelt T O R Q U E? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, we did nick it then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's fine. And um, <laughs> so, and it's, it, oh, I don't actually have a sticker on this helmet, but it's basically a little symbol that um, you can stick on your car or your bike. So, you're at bike meet or you're out and about traveling around and you're feeling, oh my God, a bit shit. You might see one of those stickers around and go, oh, he gets it. 
I'm not alone. Mm. And it's as simple as that. There's no like, come on, mate, let's go. You know, let's all go and sit in a circle and each other off with our problems. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not, it's not, there is no, I don't, I don't think there is a cure for this. Like what we have, there isn't a cure, but the cure, if the, the, the easing of Eddie's symptoms is laughter and support and, and getting into what you're into and you got, you got to get out of your bedroom. And this is why I took up walking. I mean, I've been on and off meds for my whole, for, for a long, long time. And honestly, you need to consult your doctor if you are feeling like this, whatever. But for me, it, it, it was always just trying to, it was trying to calm down a symptom rather than actually getting at a, a, a cure of a problem. Yeah. So it was, you're just sort of blocking yourself and then you end up in this weird like lethargy on these like med like meds, which don't actually make you happy. They just stop you feeling quite so bad. But it's like, a, imagine like a heartbeat sensor. You don't get the big lows, but also in that you don't get the big highs either. You're just sort of, yeah. Anyway, so I started walking and uh, trying to get exercise in and it is it is without doubt the best thing I've ever done in the world. So it's the easiest thing. You wake up in the morning like I do, like, oh my God. All you gotta do is go downstairs, put your shoes on and walk out. Mm. Doesn't matter where you are. I, I'm fortunate enough to live in a country environment, so it's a nice place. You've come on one of my walks. Yeah. Right? Um, but even if you live in a town or a city, just get out because what you're scared of lying in bed, not wanting to get out and see the world, what you're scared of, I, when you get out, you go, oh, actually, it's all right. It's not so bad. Yeah. What was I worried about? And then your mind just starts taking over of, of, of just dealing with the day. And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, well, maybe I could do that later. And by the time you you know, got rid of that pent up anxiety, I mean, you're a fitness fanatic. You, you, you understand it's, it's like this release. I think it's the more sedentary lifestyles we live in this world, the more people are going to have mental problems. And mm. the two are so I've, I've, I believe inherently linked. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a waffling story. No, not but. at all. I mean, I, I'm out of the three of us. I'm very lucky. I don't, I've not experienced those, those issues, but I've got friends, close friends that do, um, both both Joe and I've got one of my best friends has, has struggled for the last, I don't know, five, 10 years in a big way. And, you know, I think there's a danger at the moment that, that mental health becomes a kind of buzzword that's thrown mm, around by people that, yeah. oh, it's bad for my mental health. Well, yes, there are examples of that, but there are plenty of people use that, that it's really just not the case. Well, where were they in the pandemic? Yeah, but when, when you know someone that has anxiety issues or depression issues, the the just being there to have a chat to 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 go to the pub and have a beer or to to have a laugh um i as i said i I love going out my bike and i i don't have those issues but when i go out my bike or i go out for a run that's my clear my headspace yeah and it makes me feel so much better when i get back Uh, my mate that's got issues he does the same thing he walks he'll walk 18 miles yeah um on a saturday he'll just go out and walk all day yeah Um, because when you don't know what to do you can always just go for a walk if yeah. you're, I mean, obviously physically able to. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's kind of, if you don't know what to do, you're out there, go for a walk. And if you come back and it's, you're not satisfied, go for another walk. Yeah. Because at least then at the end of that day, rather than going, rather than wasting your whole Sunday with the scaries, like sitting in bed doing absolutely dick all, mm. you can look back on that day and go, well, at least I did a walk. Yeah. At least I, you know, did something. I mean, we had um, Vanessa Ruck on. Um, a few years ago, a few years ago, about a month ago, I suppose. Now. Yeah, time and flies, but it doesn't. Fly I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she was the same. She said, you know, if she just sits at home, her mental health deteriorates really badly. And so her she, injury pain. Yeah, so starts she gets kicking. out on the bike and, mm. and goes out for a, you know some massively you know hardcore off-road bike, and that's how that's her escape. Yeah, um, and I think that's what I love about actually. I, I think going out for a walk or something or some form of exercise is the best. The next best is going out in something like, well, up until recently, it would be going out for a drive on a Sunday morning yep. or something. Uh, although these days with the traffic and the road conditions and stuff, you sometimes come home more stressed than when you left. Or just a bit depressed by it. <laughs> yeah, because you're like, oh, on I've, the spent, road's I've spent rubbish. all this money on my Mustang or this cool car you've, dreamed, you've dreamt about. And then yeah. you get home and you feel unsatisfied. With a it. flat tire because it's hit a pothole. Yeah. But- and, and, and you've had some orange paint thrown at you by some lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> We're on high alert for them today, aren't we? Oh, just yeah. In case they yeah. burst in. 
but I think but the motorbike is is a, it for me is, a, is especially for me I guess because it's new is like a middle ground um and even if I am stuck behind uh, a, a Honda CRV that's doing uh 35 in a 60 and then goes and then picks up the pace to 40 miles an hour when it hits a 30 zone you yeah. know that person yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so even if you are with, stuck the, with oh, the with the uh, uh their phone sat nav stuck right in the middle of the screen <laughs> so they can't see anything out their window that that is the that is the alert sign for me you're driving down a motorway and you see this great big sat thing i've lit up yeah it's lit right up in right outline. in their face right in the middle of the screen yeah, you go, you're like they I'm can't avoid, drive i'm gonna avoid them yeah but I would say even if you are stuck behind that sort of person on a motorbike at 35 miles an hour in a 60, there's still that just freedom, the air, the wind, you know, or the it's rain. It's amazing the senses, isn't it? Amazing. You can smell like you can like you can sense temperature change going yep. through a little hollow in the in the wood, or yep. you can smell someone smoking a joint like 10 miles ahead. Like yep. someone's been through here. What? And and <laughs> yeah. it, where are they? I need to go and find them. Yeah. <laughs> That's a weird thing, isn't it? Yeah. Why do people find it acceptable to smoke weed whilst driving, whereas having a beer would be like, n no one would do, no one, I've never seen anyone driving drinking an alcoholic drink. No. The, the one I want to know is why people who vape, why is the cloud of vape that comes out so massive? <laughs> I, I mean, you're from got, they're, in, they're in front of you and like this cumulonimbus cloud comes out the car and envelops your car. Yeah. Why? Yeah. It's like, it's a, their vape rig. It's, it, I used to vape. I used it to give up smoking. And it was actually very effective, to be honest. But it, there is this, it's like, it feels, the thickness of it feels good in your lung. So the Wait, more, what are we talking about here? Oh, sorry, you're vaping, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be a big one to put into your lung. But the, the it, it, so it is, there is this thing. And you, don't you, feed him. He doesn't need oh, any, any encouragement. Feed him. Oh, yeah. Um... So, so, so there's a setting that makes it. Well, it's not a setting. Like you can you can go to the news agent and buy one of those crappy little things, but they're just that that's useless. They're going to ban those anyway, aren't they? It, people it, throw them it's away. It's the same. Yeah, it's 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 like having a little 1.1 Titron. Nothing wrong with that if you've got one. Um, versus like a 600 horsepower V8. The yeah. Citroen's fine, but the yeah. V8's better. Anyway, right. Let's 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 uh, get away from poli po yes. politics. Get away from Car vaping. Cars yeah. and bikes. Uh, yeah. Let's 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 bring it back to um, cars and bikes. So, although you are a bike guy mm. person, um, I'm known for bikes. Yeah. You're known for bikes. You also love your cars, and on top of that, you're also annoyingly good at driving. Don't don't yeah. feed him any. He, he, oh, look, uh, look at his look. This is the look at his face. Look. Uh, say, say that again. I didn't hear it. Sorry, the, so, the so microphone cut out. What so, did you just say, Joe? So tell us. Let, let's just put that one right. To, tell us about your bikes first. What, what kind okay. of really sexy bikes have you got? Yes. Yeah. Then, then we want to know about your cars, and then maybe we'll let you talk about Palmer Sport. Okay. Yes. I mean, we're running out of time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. at the end. We're running yeah. out of time already. No, we're not. I don't think there's a long enough. No. 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 Oh, do, when that does, do we get kicked out? When that? No, no, no not at all. No, no. You just depends how long you go on about Palmer Sport. Okay. Because we can map it any time. So bikes. Yeah. What bikes have I got? I, 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 again, COVID uh, retail therapy got quite out of control. Um, but as we've all experienced with the used market, in hindsight, it was pretty good, actually. I've done pretty well out of it. Okay. Although I did sell, a, just when COVID hit, I just bought a, a beautiful black 911 Turbo uh, 991. Ooh. And um, I was quite leverage. I was quite exposed on it, and then COVID hit, and I thought, "Shit, the world's gonna be, the world's gonna implode. Got to get rid of it." So I took a bit of a hit, like, "Get rid of it, get rid of it." Oh, because, no. And and now, I mean, now they're just it, oh. it, like, I was about to, I was waiting for you to say you'd made an absolute ton of money on it. No, no, no. And I, I also used to have a, a black nine six four turbo oh. with the whale tail, bad boys, bad That's boys. So you, what you're gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? And um, so I had that, sold that when I got divorced, and, and I, yeah, that was don't really talk about that because it was a beautiful car. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I got rid of this turbo, and then the, obviously the prices of everything yeah. have exploded. And um, but I did chew my way through quite a few nice classic bikes. So I've got, I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't want to sound. 
Like an arrogant. What's your day? What's your daily bike? Uh, BMW GS Adventure. Oh. Oh, that's what you That's got. where I got my obsession. For. Well, that and also the, the, the riding, the BMW Rider Training School that I went to, they're all on GSs because they're sponsored by it, BMW. It just, that bike just does everything you need it to do. And if I want to go out, a lot of motorcycling, everyone has got a daily driver and that is a GS. Mm. Yes, you might have a sexy little old 916 Ducati stuffed away in the garage or something, um, but you just can't, you can ride it every day if you really want, but when you get to our age, it's like, what's the point? And actually, I, the GS is way faster, way more comfortable, uh, and you can go way further, you can strap. I, 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 I took a whole drum kit to the Nürburgring on the back of a, an adventure bike. <laughs> We took, we, we went around, there's a picture of me, uh, to be fair, that was a triumph actually, but there's a picture of me on the roads around the Nürburgring with a full drum set on the back, knee down around this corner and these wood, it, it, <laughs> and these, these rows. And it, it, it was brilliant. That was a 44 teeth video. It was called Lords of the Ring. And we went there with a guitar, keyboard set up, drum kit, tent. We, we, the, the aim was to see how much stuff we could fit on bikes. Wow. And we played a, uh, a song in a field. Excellent. But yeah, so the, so the GS does everything you need. Uh, it's like an X5M kind of thing. Yeah. Just absolutely everything. And it's the uh, with, with bikes, we'll get onto this as well. The the bike isn't the most important thing. It's the rider. Like yeah. you can have the fastest bike in the world, but if you haven't got the skills, you might as well be on a bloody scooter. And that that's got to be way more the case for bikes than it is cars. Way more. Like you can put a pretty average driver in a super fast car yeah. and they'll be able to outdrive the good driver in an average car. Whereas on the bike, forget it. Like yeah. it's completely You're kill yourself. Well you just it you just can't like you, it's just a totally different discipline and it's very it's really interesting and we want to do a, a feature. I really want to take Joe on his first bike track day. I think you you've actually got natural talent on a bike and uh oh god but you're go. just but you're but it, we, he, he's gonna use that forever now so but, but but there is but there's different types of people in the world right we all have an understanding of grip traction it's that feeling of what is happening like even with your eyes closed i don't recommend driving but you can understand like you the sensations that your body receives little g-force information little lifts like there's some people that have got that sense and there's other people that have not got that sense and they will never ever get it yeah so but in a car it's less apparent because you can just go well i went around this last time like this i will just keep going and if you make a mistake the penalty is nowhere near as critical mm. as on a bike because when was the last time you 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 ran wide on a, on a car and fell out the car like it doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> yeah, you don't get shot into the air. Yeah, oh, high side. Can you imagine if you're yeah, high side of the bit, car, get yeah. thrown out the window. Yeah, exactly. You get a bit of a tank slapper on, and you fly out the sunroof. <laughs> like, whereas the, the so the consequences for for making a mistake on a bike are so much so much higher, which is why, understandably, people can't drive them as uh, nonchalantly as a car. Yeah, but I think. Again, the, the the information, and I, I remember Brendan on that Palm Sport Day. The two bike people, the confidence oh God, that they had. Go. Yeah, but it's the confidence because the the, the mistake that it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. Yeah, you just go, oh well, I'll just put a tire on the grass. It doesn't matter. And I think if you're really good on a bike, you're going to be exceptional in a car. Yeah, because there's use the word exceptional. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. but I think with yeah, I I, I genuinely then that's not. Well, actually. I, it's, I, I think you will be. It's funny because we were talking about Valentino Valentin Rossi, Rossi yeah, a, few, a, a few episodes ago, and you know he is, he's obviously you know a complete legend on a bike, but he's pretty, he could be on the wheel of a car as well. Yeah, yeah because he's got that. It, it's like the, those people's brains operate on a level which it's not just eyes. Like people think driving or riding is like what you see. It's very little to do with what you see. It's what you feel, isn't it? We all know. Mm. You yeah. feel when the tires are losing traction. You can feel. If you if your tread block like when you change, we, we all know when we put different tires on your car, you can feel the tread block, and you're like, hang on. So what you're telling me is you can feel an extra two millimeters of rubber on top. Yeah, yeah, because you got that. But whereas a lot of people, my mum, would be like, oh, new tires. Yeah. Like, no idea. Yeah. So it's really interesting. It, yeah, it is interesting. I think we we'll we had Sam Reynolds on the podcast uh, back at uh, Festival of Speed. Who's another legend on a bike, and um, 
and I don't know his driving history, but I know that he is super handy in a car. And he's just picked up a Lotus Amira, took it on a first track day, Brands Hatch, Paddock Hill, and he's fully sideways on, on, on the lock stopper at like, I don't know, 65, 70 mile an hour down Paddock Hill. And, and he is laughing and he thinks it's amusing. Mm. And but almost without realizing how much talent you need to do that, because for him, it's like, okay, if it does go wrong, I'm going to get some stone chips in my car and, you know, maybe touch the barrier or something. But it's not a hundred foot jump where I could break my neck, mm. you know, like. And, and, it, and then get the worst is collected by another, another vehicle. Yes. Like, like that, that's most accidents. If anyone's going to have a serious one, that's what happens. On the bike it? you're talking about. Yeah. 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 But you look at most, like, yeah, Simon Shelley's death in MoGP 10 years ago, whatever. That was exactly that, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. most of the time riders slide away or at the very least get catapulted and break some bones as they land. Yeah. But it's when someone else comes and cleans them up when they're on the floor, which yeah. is... Which is... And sad, sadly, shout out to my friend Chrissy Rouse last year. Yeah, very painful. Um, but that's the same thing that happened to him at Donington Park. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's a dangerous sport. Of course. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the car... I mean, the, I'd, I'd love to... I'd love to do more car stuff because I, I'm actually, I think I'd be pretty good at it, but I'm, I'm actually quite like, I don't understand. I'd love to have a, uh, I'd love to do some drifting and stuff to understand a bit more about, I think I'd pick it up quite quickly, but like on the road, you see all these like people like you doing drifting round roundabouts sometimes. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. you think, or just letting the, the back go out. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I want to try that, but I don't, I don't want it to snap. You need a big piece of tarmac with yeah. no consequences. Yeah, exactly. So I'd, I'd quite like to do that. And so if, I think maybe if you, we could if do it. A... Talk to a lot of the guys that do it on the telly, Chris Harris, or, or that, that they've all had hours on a on a, a track that's got you know lots of runoff, like or Bedford. a tarmac, or, yeah. or yeah. Dunsfold or somewhere. Because it is stupid and, to do it on the road. Isn't it? And the, yeah. the only you just have to learn it there. And, and I, you know, we we talked about driving standards on the, on an episode recently, and. You just don't do it on the road because no. otherwise you, you're going to end up hurting someone and um, encouraging others to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, and you do look like a complete tit as well. And I'm not saying I want to do it, but I just want to. It's like I want to know, I want to understand the car more. I mean, I've got a, a 996 911 CSR, so RPM Technics, um, <laughs> like morning. homemade GT3, poor man's GT3, basically. Oh, yeah, sounds like poor man. Yeah, yeah poverty. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, well, yeah, it's like twenty-seven grand. Oh, it was. It was. Really. No, it still will be now. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll, all right. I'll give you twenty-seven grand now for it. All right. Deal. Uh, do you take credit card? Yeah. Oh. He's, he's quite got, serious. That's a serious. Oh, face, I can't man. reach you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, but but in but so as a as a cheap thrills car, I mean, I, I know twenty-seven thousand pounds is a lot of money, but not in the car market these no, days. No. If, were, were you going to get a Ford Fiesta? They like, don't make them anymore. Don't they? No. Oh. Which is sad. But, uh, and, but, you so are. you've got... What else have you got? What's your daily... Uh, the a X5M, which was in your video. Yeah. Uh, but it's a 2014... 2015 X5M. Yep. Um, which, again, I'm, I'm quite tight. I don't like spending a lot of money. I don't like having a lot of money tied up in a vehicle. But I like having luxurious, cool vehicles. So that that X5M, I think the list price, even in 2015, was 105 grand. Yeah, and I picked it up for from 40 for 40 and from Berry. Probably still worth close to 40. Uh, yeah, as uh, yeah, private sale. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and, and then you got your van. And I got the van, which is you know, out of everything, probably my favourite vehicle yeah. because it allows. For me, it's what it allows. Uh, it's the enabler. For all the things I like doing in my life, so in fact, tomorrow I'm I'm loading up a Yamaha R1, riding down to driving it down to Italy, so through the Alps. It's got a little pop top roof on it, yeah. And then um, two days at Mugello, which is probably the mm. best circuit in Europe, particularly on a motorbike. Not I mean, jealous it, it is just it's it's glorious, and um, and the van is just like I love it. And again, for my anxiety in the past, I used to I used to have real freakouts in traffic jams, like I just couldn't. Like I, I couldn't sit there, particularly on a motorway, because you're just stuck. Mm. And I would just get this, oh, my God. But in a van, I can just, I've got, like, a bed up top. I've got, you know, you can you can survive in it. It's like Wait, a so do you go vehicle. to sleep in traffic jams then? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, or just, yeah. it's a, it's like a home. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's a home. Safe space. It's Away a, from it's home. A, it's exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a safe space. And it's, yeah, I just love the van. I love it. 
Have you still got, I saw a video of you once on a Ducati that was pretty much like a road legal GP, uh, motor GP bike. I don't know whether that was your bike or not. Like, I'm not a bike guy, so I don't Oh, that was maybe your, one of your, your you know, when you went like to see the collection? You I, went, uh, uh, no, I did have a, a V4 Panigale. That was it, yeah. Once oh. in the Corsa colors. Yeah. But, but I've, to be honest, the, the bikes I like most now, because those things, they're, like, they're amazing. They're absolutely phenomenal. And how much would that be? I mean, t- for our mainly car 20, audience. 20, 27 grand, I think, is a V4 okay. S now. But a V4R will be oh, 40. Wow. And how but much that, was... That's right. That's like... That's, well, what was your HP race? HP was, race was 68,000. 68. And when did you get that? 2018? Yeah. yeah. But you, I sold that pretty Yeah, quick. you bought it and then regretted it pretty quickly. It was too expensive to crash. And I'm too tight. I don't want to crash it. So I bought a, an Aprilia RSV4 RF for like eight and a half grand and went faster on that because the fear of... Because again, it's not like you put a tire on the grass. Oh, oh got stone chip. You've, you've screwed it. Like you are... Like yeah. if you drop your 60... It had a carbon fiber frame, which for a bike is unheard of. So it was like... Yeah. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. And what what was the engine? If you, I remember you telling me every was it every five hundred kilometers? No, needed? every every two thousand miles. Okay, it needed a. It was recommended to have a an engine rebuild swap. So you would take oh, the engine the out, send it off, and then they'd send you another what? engine. And that was how much back then? The engine was twelve grand, and the labour would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, mind you, I, I saw something. They didn't sell many. No. no. So if you got one, I'd hold on to it. I saw a thing on Instagram last week of Valkyrie needs uh, its first run-in service at a thousand kilometers. Right, twelve grand. <laughs> well, it, and then the first service is like a hundred grand or something. It's ridiculous. But the, the whole, but that whole thing really pisses me off. If if you've got a Ferrari or a Maserati or whatever, and you're like, oh, I need some brake discs, or a McLaren was the was the story I heard, um, and you're like, oh, yeah, you go to the McLaren dealership, it's twelve grand for some brake discs. What? And then you find the actual part number, and it's like the same as a, oh, as a Corvette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a Corvette. Yeah. And you're like, but these are four grand. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> McLaren tax. But but yeah. doesn't doesn't that infuriate people? I don't mm. understand. Or do some? Do you think some people get a sick? Um, obviously wealthy people like a sick. I was going to say boner. Buzz. <laughs> a, sick, a sick buzz out of spending that much money to go, oh, these are special ones because it comes in a box with a sticker on it. I, mean, I guess the argument would be, especially these super high-end hypercars, is that's that's the price of ownership. right? You know, it, but it's not, though, is it? It's inflated. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. It shouldn't It shouldn't be. You know, if, we, if we're into cars, we should be making, even manufacturers should be opening up the market to everyone, not just yeah. catering for this half of 1% that can I'm, afford these things. I guess the guy to watch for that is Matt Armstrong because you watch him yes. on his builds. I mean, he'll find like, you know, a Lamborghini part and then it's, it's really just a VW a part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Some of the things. It's literally like 100 quid instead of 2,000 pounds from Lamborghini. Yeah. Like, it, it takes the piss. And that type of that type of thing with my tight bass would, it just makes me go, do you know what? No, I don't, no, I'm, not, I'm never going to buy one of those. I'm never going to buy one. Mm. Yeah. You know, in my current financial states, I couldn't afford it anyway. Ne- I'm never going to buy a Valkyrie either because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I've decided. Same. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. the fact it's, what is it, a million quid? Something like that. Uh, probably more get, than that, actually, isn't it? No, if you get one. I mean, I think the, I think the, the, the problem is, though, these days in that sort of end of the market um, is with the future looming and EVs and all the rest of it, I think all manufacturers, rightly so, if we all had a car, if we all owned one, we would be pushing out everything we could that was exciting and overpriced. And I think the biggest example of that, um, and it's something I posted on my Instagram the other day, is the BMW 3-litre CSL, um, mm-hmm. yeah. which obviously I love BMW as a brand on the whole, um, but that they're, they're roughly £700,000. Uh, they made 50 units, so that is limited for sure worldwide. So it's going to be much less than that. 700,000. 700, that car was on the top of the yep, stand. Yep. Oh my God. They all sold immediately. So it, so that kind of proves me wrong straight away because <laughs> they could have probably charged a million and then they would have sold for sure. But I just think that's an extreme because once you've seen, once you know it's based on an M4 CSL or an M4, and you see the M4 underneath that frock it's wearing, you can't unsee the M4, and then you're like, that's just not 700 grand's worth. But 
they proved that it is because it's sold out. So I think all manufacturers are doing it and they are literally, I think, you know, again, Porsche, all of them, they're all pushing these last sort of the ST that's just been launched. I'm sure it's, of course, it's brilliant. It's going to be. It's a Porsche GT car underneath. But they're literally just pushing out and i think we're going to see that for the next couple of years we're going to see the most ridiculous models and price models but people are going to buy them because they're limited numbers well this is it this is this is this is one of the biggest problems with the car and bike market particularly used is the speculators yeah like a lot of people don't give a shit like what car it is it's like oh it's a limited number from this thing they've got so much money they don't care it's irrelevant yeah and and my other little theory on this is there's been so recent years there's been so much new money from different like bitcoin has has a i think bitcoin and all that sort of quick cash has really affected things like car markets because you suddenly got these young generally younger people that are into cars and stuff like oh shit i don't know i just need to, i need to spend some stuff i've just yeah, yeah. you know suddenly got 100 grand in my account and i'm 18 what am I going to do? They're not going to, they're not going to put a mortgage down on a two-bed flat, are they? They're going to go and buy a bloody Lambo. Yeah. I, I would, and I don't blame them. Yeah. 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 So I think there's, there's, a, there's a load of these sort of factors that have come in, but absolutely without a doubt, I think the car market and bike market is so ridiculously inflated that something's got to change. I don't think it's sustainable. I think when people start realizing that that car you're talking about isn't worth 700 grand, because let's face it, it's not. No. It's and, and I like BMW as well, but it's not a premium. It's not a Ferrari. It's not. A, it doesn't have that gravitas. They still knock them out, and it is what it is. You know, it, the only reason a BMW should be worth a lot of money is that it performs that well. That's why. B, that's what BMW. That's their customer base. Yeah, it's a cheap way of going really, really fast, really, really reliably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not cheap anymore. No. You could buy like three GT3 RSs. For yeah, well, I think I put in the comments, someone went, oh, well, it's all about your, I don't know, it's all relative or something. And I was like, and I just replied with, you could buy a fully spec PTS GT3 Touring and a £500,000 house for the same money. How? <laughs> like, so you get your much, much better car like undoubtedly and somewhere, to, park it. And somewhere to, and a nice pad to park it with the same money. It's not, but... um. But I think before we wrap, we have got to talk about the Palmer Sport Day a little bit. Uh, here we go. And I'm sorry, just uh, I can't believe I'm bringing this up. It's almost like I'm burying my own grave here. So, so um, should, we, should we give some? So actually, the first the first time I met you was that yeah. Palmer Sport Day, and that was a while ago now. Was, yeah, and if it, yeah, well, hopefully years, yes, we would love to arrange another one. We're trying. I think we're trying to actually, work. I was actually in my 996 CSR there. Oh, that's when you just got it. Must have been. Yeah. So when was that? And we I followed you up Bedford sort of area Bedford way yeah yeah and you were in your m2 Four and then you were like oh he's still there so it must have been 2019 then yeah, it must have just been b before covid and stuff but, yeah it was definitely before that. um but we had we had an eclectic mix of youtubers mostly car guys and girls becky was there yeah uh ricky living life fast was there yeah. uh sid was there yeah um who else was there there was lots of people yeah and and then obviously we had the two the two outsiders the, the, the two, two two wheel people yeah the, the motorbike guy and then and then our mutual friend brendan fairclough who is a mountain bike guy um who both of those love their cars admittedly um uh, but those two kind of gave the majority of us a bit of a pasting overall and i think can you remember can you remember who won overall mm. uh, some i mean i should have brought the trophy really shouldn't i <laughs> <laughs> I remember because you don't know with these Palmer Sport days you kind of know I was a bit surprised actually to be yeah, honest at you, the end of it you know who wins each section because each section's timed so you walk away going oh well done Ped well done Joe well done and, but then and towards the end of it then you all sit down and have lunch or whatever or dinner and then get presented with like your individual prizes and then it's all on points isn't it and then mm. it's like the overall winner and honestly I kind of thought maybe I've done it. Oh, you, you were gutted, mate. Yeah. I, you I, did that I, thing where you stood up. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't your name. I, I, I didn't. Yeah. Well, maybe my muscles are twitching a little bit. And the bit. winner is Baron Von Joe Achilles. Uh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's our love child. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was, yeah. It I was, mean, it was a cool day. It, and I, I'd never done a, a car track oh, day God. before. Yeah. And 
makes it even I, I worse. Did, when I was, I think when I was very young, early in my in my twenties, I got bought. Like a, you know, when you turn up, so we just leave them to it. Yeah, these these, these rip off airfields, and you drive a a, a supercar. Oh, around yeah. the yes, and you, you know, they're just awful. Yeah. In fact, there's a, it was a don't rev it. Yeah, don't it, do it this. A, there was a it was a Ferrari 360 actually, and it felt like it was held together by like an IKEA. Uh, bracket set i mean it was like this thing was falling apart it yeah. was like anyway but yeah so i'd never done so it straight out of factory then maybe they are like that maybe they Ooh. are like that <laughs> they were <laughs> quickly yeah um, but uh yeah so i'd never done a track day a car track day so i was a little bit nervous and then i i didn't really know anyone i knew joe and then but he was off you know being a big i am and uh <laughs> So I was sort of the first, the first few events, I was just sort of observing and sitting back and, you know, I got a couple of fourths, thirds, fifths. You're consistently good. Yeah. But it was across all the, like the worst one was that, the Renault, uh, was it the Clio? Cut cars. Well, your one, your one blew up. Your I, blew, one blew up. I blew mine up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They've got rid of them now. They've just I, I replaced them with that. something else. I can't remember what, could, but yeah, they got rid of isn't it? They have, yeah. They've replaced them with Genetas, yeah, because yeah. the Clio's well. But yeah, you were consistently up there. And, yeah. But I think what always lets me down, I went back a couple of years ago with um, Barry, had a, like a party, uh, like a sort of management party there. And and, um, and so I went there. And I, I honestly, like, if I'm not going to kid you guys, I did get, I did turn up thinking, right, I'm going I'm, I'm going to take this one away. Like, I still obviously had my dark scars from when you, <laughs> and I was like, this is, this is done. And first few events, I think I was top, 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 or thereabouts. There was another guy though that, that used to race lots of cars and me and him were like battling away. I thought, no, it's all about consistency. And then it was the four wheel drive that let me down. It was the, the lining up those, because you're like, all the tennis balls. I see, I was second in that. I smashed that. That's one. that, and that's and and that that is one of the highest points you can get. So if you place well in that, it's like winning three or four of the others. So, so I really focused so hard on that, knowing, but I still failed badly. I'm not very good at off roading, clearly, and uh, and lost it all there. But again, I didn't know, and, and I, I did do that. Like in yeah, it was like and the winner of overall. I thought, oh, this oh, is about. God. I think I even gave my phone to Tony Lewis. I was like, Tony, can you get this? <laughs> <laughs> can you get this clip? <laughs> so have you ever won it then? Mm, so you've never won I, the, I don't the driver so. of the day? No. Oh, wow. No. I, my no. my trophy will be on eBay. Yes. If I'd like to sell it. Yeah. If I'd like to. Uh, can I borrow it maybe? You can borrow it if you yeah. want. Like, like, but yeah, but it was, look, I loved it. And the high speed stuff, I was way better at. Yeah. Like the, the actual track thing, the single seater, I screwed up that one. So I thought it was over then because yeah. I kept spinning it. But the, the little two seater job. Yes. It was just, the, again, we're talking about earlier, the consequences are just so low in yeah. a car. I mean, I know I say that people obviously have horrific accidents and it's a dangerous sport, but compared to a bike, it's just nothing. It's like, yeah, yeah. oh, well. What? And, and uh, understeering a bike, you fall off. Mm. Oversteering a bike, you fall off. In a car, you, you, the, the, it's, such a, it's just such a big, big leeway. Platform. But yeah. I'd love to do it. I'd love to get more into it. And the older I get, like I do want to start, I mean, just touching on the whole making content on motorbikes. Again, it's so much harder than making content in a car. Wind noise, rain. Um, faffery. Faffery, taking stuff with you. Like you can't just, if you've got a super bike, it's like brilliant. Oh, where do I put my tripod? You know, you can't do it on your own. It's really difficult. So I think I might, I might delve into doing a bit more car. car you yeah, don't things. do too much though. You know, it's like, you know, a bit of a, you know. Yeah, I might steal a podcast. Saturated. I might do a podcast. As yeah, well. yeah. Well, if I do do a podcast, you guys can come on. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's probably a good time to wrap it. Mine might be sponsored by. But... <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna get that in. <laughs> uh, a big shout out for yeah. sponsoring me. Uh, hey, on the motorbikes. Listen, you know we're not all as fortunate as Ped as I, Ped and I. So uh, you know, having Michelin as a as a sponsor so look without competition the world will be boring wouldn't it exactly i love that he said that and he's, he's got a michelin boom look at the branded boom he hasn't even seen it everything's i'm in your i'm in your crib you are in our crib <laughs> and actually talking of cribs i think we mentioned it at the beginning but i'll mention it once again big shout out and thanks to podium place yep. um mm. we've all uh, had a lovely coffee this morning which is probably part of the reason i could do with like, another one actually yeah yeah oh, we've well, got, we got walkie talkies we're just we're just walkie talkie a coffee order over. coffee coffee yeah uh, yeah i think we'll go and have actually we're gonna go down and have lunch um yep. oh nice uh nice. and then a quick quick coffee and um 
and say our farewells. But um, yeah, can big... I just do a quick little shout out of as well? So, can. so if anyone likes the sound of that permission to talk thing, yes. the website is p2t.uk, and you can get a little sticker. You can put it on your car or your bike, whatever. Um, and it's literally just a symbol to say, I get it. That's it. And, I get it. Yeah, I, I think I've got some with me, so I'll give, give some. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah it's just like, you never know if someone might be having an absolute freak out and they see that and go, ah, oh, it's all right. Mate, it's all about helping that one person. Whatever I've done posts on Instagram and stuff, if I get one reply from someone that just yeah. says, this has helped me or yeah. uh, just the, I think it's normalizing things as well isn't it well it's again making... I mean I wish I can't believe we didn't even talk about this I rode my bike to Bosnia yes on, in I... aid of this which was a, a mental health clearing head exercise so yeah solo ride like, I just I couldn't work couldn't, I was that sort of ill I couldn't work I was just like I've got to go so I packed up and just rode th yeah the GS yep through Bosnia that's Serbia, a brilliant series Romania. And it's amazing. And that's on the Baron Von Grumble channel. That is on the Baron Von Grumble channel. And it's a really good series because you... It's very, what's, very what's honest. This, it's yeah. quite embarrassing in a lot of spaces. Well, no, but it's not. But you're you're crying in places. You're... Shut you're, up. You're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're very up and down. Your emotions are like... It couldn't be more I think, real. I think it's an accurate example of what yes. a lot of people go through. And I, I'm, again, I'm trying not to whinge. I know lots of people have got bad things, but it's the difficulty of seeing the light. Yeah. It's like being in a hall of mirrors and you can just never find the door to get out. Yeah, I don't mind being like that. Just good looking, good looking. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was a joke, by the way, just in case. You're going to cut that bit out because yeah. it's going to look really yeah. stupid. I know, like me in a recent podcast with my cap on backwards and glasses and getting told off for looking. I can't remember what people. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a podcast about talking about cars and bikes. Yeah. Not, it's not fashion. Is it? Well, I was down up to levels in fashion, mate. No. no. <laughs> anyway, uh, right. So, yeah, Chris, thank you very much for coming on and your time. I know you're a busy man, um, so I really thanks appreciate it. Me. And thanks for talking so openly and um, just being yourself. Um, keep up the good work. Thank and you. I look forward to seeing you very soon, doing some motorbike content, hopefully, with you. Um, thanks, guys. Yeah. Cool. Ed, good back. stuff. I think you, you could just. Uh, Easy now. Easy now. Easy now.